Before we go into the details of the four different ways SignalR makes real-time applications, I want to talk about why we should use SignalR instead of just picking one of the list. Now, if you didn't see the last video, the way SignalR works is it picks one of four of the most popular technologies used to make real-time apps. We have WebSockets, Event Source, Forever Frame, and long pooling. You guys are testing my memory here. <laughs> now, why not just use WebSockets directly instead of using SignalR? Why do we need to add an extra layer of complication to make it work? Well, there's a lot of great reasons, and that's what we're going to be discussing here. Well, the first reason I have is that when you create an app using SignalR, all of the four different technologies that we talked about are implemented. That means you really only need to understand one and you get the power of four versus learning just one of the four. Well, if for some reason that one doesn't work, you have to go to a different one. So that's why I think SignalR is great because you only have to learn one way and it'll figure out the rest. Another reason is that if like WebSockets gets a new feature or is updated a little bit, well, if your application's programmed in WebSockets, you might have to go and change some things or whatever like that. But if you're using SignalR, all those changes are going to be combined into the, <laughs> the usage of SignalR. You know, you don't have to worry about each little technology changing because SignalR is going to deal with that and make your application work the same way with the code you already have. You understand what I'm saying? Like, if you've implemented SignalR and all the technologies change, as long as you're using SignalR, SignalR is going to give you the right results. Great. All right, the next reason is that SignalR is an abstraction. Now, what is an abstraction? An abstraction is basically a simplified way to work with something. Think of like a computer. To use a computer, you don't have to understand electricity. You don't have to understand binary or computer programming. All you gotta know how to do is plug it in and turn the on button. Press it, not turn it, unless Unless you have a turnable on button, that'd be kind of cool. Just... That's an abstraction. If you want the more detailed stuff, if you want to get into circuitry, you can. You just got to open the tower and dig around. But you don't have to. That's an abstraction. SignalR works the same way in that you don't need to understand how it's working. You just do it. It separates us from the lower level junk. So here's a layer, right? And let's say farther down is closer to binary. Binary is like the lowest you can get, like 010101, which if you want to learn that stuff, I have videos over it. The farther up, higher level, is more like HTML and CSS, and somewhere in the middle you might have like C sharp and then C. There's different layers of how low level something is. Well, signal R is higher up meaning we don't need to understand any of this lower stuff. We just make a signal R function or method or whatever and it works. That's why it's cool. The next reason I got is that signal R is more cross compatible. By that I mean it works in more browsers and it also works on other things such as phone apps. It's not always just for websites. You can create a backend that will feed your website and your phone app and you you only have one backend. That's why it's cool. It's not as easy to do that kind of stuff with WebSockets and all those other technologies. And lastly, it's easy. That's the best reason. You can seriously pick up this and make some cool apps in just a few days. Like, it's easy. So that's all I got for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace!